What is up, light beams? This episode of The No is brought to you by Cinderfit. In case you missed it, I started using Cinderfit blocks in my workouts and I am absolutely loving them. Cinderfit is a design oriented fitness brand based in Miami, 305, what it do. And they have created these awesome, versatile, weighted, and very chic cinder blocks that are a super asset to any gym or home workout. I can't wait to tell you all about my experience with them mid episode. And you already know you are going to be able to use my unique promo code, Nikki Spo, when you check out at www.cinderfit.com. Welcome to the No Podcast with me, Nikki Spo. What is up, you guys? Welcome to Nikki Spo Unveiled. Yep, that's what we, me, myself, and I are calling these solo episodes from now on. And I am in like, I don't know, this great awakening, resurrective, transitional place in my life. I want to shift the energy of these solos a little bit. We are uncovering, all right? We are uncovering. Obviously, we all know that the no isn't about knowing everything. It's about coming to know ourselves. And while my main gig is keeping it classy and like appropriate and all that jazz because, you know, we are a classy and appropriate vibe over here most of the time. You know, I don't know. I am feeling like I want to push the boundaries a little more. I realize that I, okay, I think that I'm funnier than most people actually believe me to be and in my brain that actually makes me funnier <laughs> well if you've been listening for a while you might have caught on to my in- unique sense of humor which I really don't even know how to describe it and if you know me in person like for real for real you know I can be very like direct borderline uncomfortably so for some people and I always speak my mind you know for a person who doesn't drink I would definitely prefer to be your cup of absinthe minus the come down over your glass of overly sweetened and artificially flavored orange juice any day, y'all. So my goal for these new Vibe Vibe Nikki Spo Unveiled episodes is to be like a lot more free-spirited, unscripted, maybe a little ranty, super passionate, tell you what's on my mind, uninhibited, maybe a little nitty gritty, and obviously always worth your time. Whether I'm asking you to think about something differently, whether it's for pure entertainment, or I don't know, maybe you just like the sound of my voice. I personally think it's kind of deep and masculine, but I fuck with that, so yeah. I want this to be the real real, the real inner knowing shit on my terms, the stuff that I think about in my brain, but I don't always want to say out loud, but like other people gotta be thinking these things too, so let's talk about it. Okay, that's it. That's my pitch. Come listen to these episodes with me with an open mind and an open heart and a good sense of humor. Some of the serious stuff isn't so serious, even when it is, because if it's mentionable, it's manageable. And if I can talk about the tough stuff and still crack a smile, I feel like I'm doing something right. So today I am asking, are we just all fucked up? Like all of us? Are we all? Let's discuss. I know, I know it sounds very harsh. Okay, so my immediate answer to the question, are we all fucked up, is no. We aren't messed up, okay? But also, like, we are, right? Like the trauma, the little T trauma and the big T trauma, which if you don't know the difference, I'm going to explain it. So the Newport Institute describes big T trauma as generally related to a life-threatening event or situation. This could be a natural disaster or a violent crime, a school shooting, or a serious car accident. In addition, acute psychological traumas, such as the death of a parent, are part of the big T trauma definition. Chronic and ongoing trauma, such as repeated abuse, can also qualify as big T trauma. Conversely, the Newport Institute describes little T trauma as events that typically don't involve violence or disaster, but do create significant distress. For young adults, examples of small T trauma might be a breakup, the death of a pet, losing a job, getting bullied, or being rejected by a friend group. While these incidents don't threaten a young adult's physical safety, they can produce the same trauma responses in adults and children as big T trauma does. In fact, there is now evidence that repeated exposure to little T trauma can cause more emotional harm than exposure to one big T traumatic event. Ultimately, any event or ongoing situation that causes distress, fear, and a sense of helplessness qualifies as a trauma. And trauma can have serious mental, physical, and emotional impacts on young people, negatively influencing daily functioning and relationships. 
Traumatic stress is associated with a higher risk of suicide as well as anxiety, depression, and co-occurring issues, including substance abuse and eating disorders, end quote. All right, that's the only part I'm going to read because hello, people, I'm not actually a psychologist or a therapist and I have never pretended to be. I relay information and share my personal thoughts on them, but I'm not going to lie. When I consider the definitions of big and little t traumas, I'm all, woo-hoo, who the F doesn't have some of it? Who? Who? I want to put a book on your radar. It's called What Happened to You? Conversations on Trauma, Resilience, and Healing. And it's by Dr. and Psychology PhD, Bruce D. Perry and Oprah Winfrey. And the gist of the book is that it kind it's like kind of a combo between Oprah and Dr. Perry in which Oprah becomes really open about the traumatic events in her own life, asking Dr. Perry questions, and then him offering feedback and then psychoanalysis throughout the book. The thing is, like what I've personally learned through working a 12-step program is that a lot of our stories of trauma and life experience may sound different. They might be packaged in different gift wrapping, if you will, but the feelings of our collective experiences elicit like those seems to be very similar. The feelings our experiences elicit seem to be very similar. I think a lot of us are longing for the same thing. So when Oprah shares her her experiences in the book, like while I'm tempted to think, oh, that horrible thing didn't happen to me, I pause and think to myself that that trauma is relative. Okay, I believe that one person's worst case scenario can have the same weight of impact as another person's completely different worst case scenario, even if the experiences were very far apart on a scale of severity. So one of my former guests, Dr. Andrea Loeb from South Miami Psychology Group, gave me an example about two patients in their respective healing processes in regards to two differently scaled, like different severely scaled, right, sexual abuse experiences. And that the determining factor for their healing was whether or not they were believed when they told. The example she gives in episode six is that one anonymous patient may have been raped several times and the other anonymous patient was forced to watch pornography. On the scale of severity, being raped would typically be considered more severe. However, her point is the following. The person who was raped numerous times was believed when he or she came forward. That person was believed and got the help he or she needed, while the other person who was made to watch porn was not believed by his or her confidants and thus continued through life questioning the experience, feeling gaslit, not feeling heard, and not getting help. The two healing processes were drastically different. So while I was reading what happened to you, I'm like, damn, fucked up shit happens everywhere. You could legit have had an incredible, really healthy upbringing, but like there's still your best and worst memory as a child, right? And I want us to consider like how that affects us. Hold the phone, you guys. I want to take a break so I can tell you all about Cinderfit, my new best friend in the gym. Okay, so it's no secret. I work out like a lot and I work out in a lot of different ways because, well, I like to keep things exciting and new and fresh and different. Enter the Cinderfit block. Listen, I am pretty strong physically and emotionally, duh. And these blocks come in a range of weights that I'm using to add some versatility to my workouts. There's a lot that goes into my thought process when I'm making purchasing decisions. Everything in my home and my life has to be functional. If it doesn't have a function, I don't want it. But I think it's also no secret that I'm really into aesthetics. I like things to also look nice. <laughs> so I love that Cinderfit has created a stylish, design-oriented, and functional product. Basically, it's like a gym in a block. I don't know if y'all saw, but I stacked my 15 and 25 pound blocks in my home gym, and they're actually like pretty and functional. So I love them. I've been sumo squatting, deadlifting, bicep curling, mountain climbing, like the workout obvious, obviously, no, I'm not climbing any literal mountains in Miami. I've been tricep dipping, Russian twisting, and I can even attach resistant bands to these bad boys and do all kinds of resistance training with them. I'm having fun, seriously. I also love that Cinderfit has all kinds of supplemental videos on their site so I can get a high intensity training workout in, some sculpting, and even some flow-based inspiration when I need it. Whether you are a beginner or you're doing advanced workouts, you're going to be able to use the Cinderfit block and I'm not even kidding you guys, it can easily replace all of your workout equipment. 
You know I've got the hookup and I love to share all my great finds with you guys. So for a limited time, you'll be able to get free shipping on these um, heavy bad boys with my code NikkiSpo when you order your CinderFit block at www.cinderfit.com. Summer is coming. I legit think of Game of Thrones every time I say that. You know when they say like winter is coming in Game of Thrones and I think it's like a thing? Well, here in Miami, summer is coming and we need to get ready, folks. Go to cinderfit.com and order yours like right now, right now. I think a lot about my mom who I have been able to forgive despite people thinking like, how could you forgive her? And who I now, you know, I feel like I have a great relationship with my mom now that she's passed on. I really truly believe that she, along with my dad, who is generally great, but also definitely imperfect, did her best. She was doing her best with the tools, resources, and trauma that were passed down to her by her own experiences, as was my father and the other adults in my life. I am a unique individual, right? As we all are. I think to myself a lot of times like, well, I didn't get the love that I needed or deserved or whatever, you know, like I didn't get what I needed. Well, who is to say that our parents or caretakers knew with absolute certainty what was best for us? Seriously, think about it. Absolute certainty. I really don't think there is such a thing. I think there's doing our best. And when we know better, we do better. I try to be a good, thoughtful, and conscious parent, but I also know that I'm not perfect and I come with my own set of triggers and breaking points, which obvi I work on. But the point I want to make here today in this Nikki Spo Unveiled episode is that we are all working and walking around with some baggage. And it really is up to us to sit with it and work on it. Something that Dr. Perry said in What Happened to You that stuck with me is this. The title, What Happened to You, signifies a shift in perspective that honors the power of the past to shape our current functioning. I love that he said that because our pasts are important. Like our experiences do shape the F out of us. They legit mold us into who we are. And it's easy to say, oh yeah, well, it's not what happens to me that matters, but how I respond to what happens to me that matters. And y'all, that is true as duck. Quack. But like a lot of the times, how we respond to the things that happen to us is based on what happened to us before. Our reactions, responses from fear, patience, confidence, accountability, joy, humility, willingness, anger, all of that. So yes, how we respond matters. But I think a lot of us, well, me, let me talk about me personally. (laughs) I have to unlearn how to respond to things. I have to sit with my responses and be like, oh, I'm doing that thing from a place of X, Y, Z again. And I don't like how that feels and I wanna respond differently. And so the healing work begins over and over and over. So are we all fucked up? Definitely, maybe. But I think our generation is working on it. I'm working on it in any event. And if you're still listening, then I think you might be too in your own way. I want you guys to check out the book, What Happened to You? I'll link it in the show notes and feel free to hit me up with your questions via DM. Thanks for listening to this new and hopefully improved Nikki Spo Unveiled session, XOXO. What is up, Truth Speakers? Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Know brought to you by CinderFit, my new favorite piece of workout equipment, which can easily replace all of your existing workout stuff because no one likes clutter. You can pretty much do it all fitness-wise with a CinderFit block. So like I said earlier, summer is coming. It's time to get your fitness game on so you're feeling great, not just for summer, but for life. Get free shipping on your heavy CinderFit block for a limited time by using my code NikkiSpo when you check out at www.cinderfit.com. Enjoy. Thank you so much for listening to The Know. If you loved this episode, go ahead and share it with a friend. Words are so powerful and someone may need to hear what we covered today. And if you really loved this episode, please take a moment to rate the show and leave a review. Your comments are so important and valued and they give other listeners insight on what to expect on The Know. You can connect with me personally via Instagram at Nikki Sap Spo and The Know with Nikki Spo. My hope for you today is that you are fearless in looking inward so that you can be your highest, most authentic self and go after the life of your dreams. dreams.